Michigan State last time out, a win at Oakland on Wednesday. They put 102 points on the board. Oregon last Sunday put 110 on the board against Long Beach State. Bottom line is these are two teams, Carol, who can get up and down the floor and score. It should be fun. I mean, great pace. Michigan State saddled with a couple of their key players with injury, but they can get up and down. They can score the basketball. They can make threes, and that's a real challenge. When you play Oregon, you have to be able to match that offensive production that they bring from all five positions. Tina Neighbor, Jesse Dickinson, Tiffany Bird, our officiating crew. Oregon in the road black wins the opening tip, and we are underway. I take Azorla at the point into the hands of Ionescu. Turning and looking to score on the first possession and wasting no time to get on the board. Averaging 18 points a game at 12 points. A school record 17 assists in the win against Long Beach State last time out. Picked up by Ionescu. Aaron Boley, and what a great start for Oregon after a week off. Boley knocks down the three. See the starting lineup for Oregon as Madrika Cook tries to find something for Michigan State. Taryn McCutcheon leading the team in assists. And Oregon off to a great start, getting a stop on the defensive end. Well, you talk about McCutcheon and the task that she has today. At least her initial matchup is Ionescu, who's already hit two shots. And then on the offensive end, she's going to be asked to score and play make at a high rate. So it's going to be a challenge this afternoon for McCutcheon. Cook, McCutcheon, Mia Cloud in, Victoria Gaines, Jenna Allen, the five for Michigan State. They are without Shea Colley, strong defender, their point guard. She's got a knee injury, so she's out. Sydney Cooks is dressed, but she hasn't played in the last three games due to an ankle injury. Claire Hendrickson, redshirt freshman, hasn't played in the last three. Flying in on the offensive glass is Satu Saboli, and an early timeout called by Michigan State. You could not ask for a better start for the third-ranked Ducks. A 9-0 run in the first two minutes of this game in East Lansing. Inside the Breslin Center, early timeout called by Michigan State. Great start for Oregon, averaging almost 95 points a game. Knocked out of bounds. It will remain Michigan State ball with 17 to shoot. Drinka Cook isn't at 100%. She's been battling a knee problem. Jenna Allen. Michigan State would like to go try to attack on the inside. They'll look for their first points from the outside. Offensive rebound and the putback is good. Yeah, I think that's something they need to do more of is just attack the offensive glass when they get the shot up. You saw that Allen drew the double team. They got a quality look at a three-point shot. And then they're two bigs just pounding the offensive glass. That's a way for them 
to try and get some points in this game. Torrey Gaines averaging 10 points a game. Yescu off the window for two. Perfect from the field so far. McCutcheon, good shooter. Not this time, though. And rebound for Ruthie Ebert. Sabali trying to go all the way and finishes. So talented. I mean, at, at every spot on the roster. You look at here to start the game, and you've obviously got the, the headliner in UNESCO, but they have so many capable scorers on this team. They double down on Allen, who's in trouble, and gets out of trouble. Count it in the foul. Michigan State needed something good to happen, and they got it right there with Jenna Allen getting her first points. Well, the interior is somewhere that I think Michigan State can, can attack. And certainly their first two buckets, no surprise, have come from their post players. Foul on Hebert, her first personal. Allen averaging a team best 15 points a game and also leading the team in rebounding. Seven and a half a game. Hebert trying to back Allen in. Sabali kept it alive, now McCutcheon. Michigan State wants to run. Averaging 86 points a game, McCutcheon wild shot won't go. And it will be Oregon ball. Welcome to East Lansing, a great start for the third-ranked Oregon Ducks as they have jumped out to an early 16-4 lead over Michigan State. Jenna Allen trying to slow the Ducks down, but Kara Lawson right from the very start. Sabrina Yadescu establishing things for the Ducks, 3-for-3 three three from the field. They went on a 9-0 run to get the scoring starter here in the quarter. Well, no surprise that Sabrina is at the center of what Oregon is doing. And the other thing that's a great sign for Oregon is Aaron Bowley's hit two threes already as well. I mean, if she gets hot from beyond the arc, this could be an even scarier Oregon offense. Great take and a finish by the freshman from Owen Mills, Maryland. Nia Clowden, a chance for a three-point play. So here's a little bit of what you've missed with Sabrina Ionescu early going. Nice little up and under using the left hand, so skilled, so composed, and has the ability to, to read defenses at an elite level for a college player. And has that competitiveness that you want in, in your best player. So she definitely leads the way for Oregon, but this is a multi-talented Oregon team, a lot of explosiveness offensively. Five players averaging 12 points a game or more. The only team in Division One that has five averaging 12 or more. Sabalin, wide open lane to the basket. Susie Merchant took an early timeout in the first quarter because it was too easy for Oregon and another easy hoop for the Ducks. Allen. Jenna Allen is averaging 15 points a game. She has six of the 10 for Michigan State. Well, she's definitely the player for the Spartans that's looked the most comfortable. All right, in this game, and attacking Oregon defensively. And Susie Merchant talked about how she felt like she had a little bit of an advantage on the interior. Kelly Graves is here coaching his Oregon team. On Wednesday, the NCAA imposed two years of probation on Oregon for rules violations in men's and women's basketball in the track and field programs. Graves suspended for two games. He told us before the game he's got 15 days to decide if he's going to accept the suspension or appeal it. So he is here coaching. At Michigan State, the team is going from here tomorrow onto South Dakota State. He intends to coach that game. We'll talk more about that as we go along. For those just joining us, you touched upon it before with how this veteran team for Oregon probably isn't rattled by any sort of interruption in coaching because this is an experienced group. Yeah, I think when you look at what you're trying to do as a college coach is you're trying to minimize disruption. That's what you spend your time doing is to try and minimize disruption for your players. Well, this is a disruption because they're going to be uh, potentially without their coach for two games. Uh, but I think you look at how equipped this team is with their experience, with their leadership. I think they're well equipped to, to handle that through the schedule. 
Jenna Allen gets whistled for the travel, so it will be Oregon basketball. The Ducks come in 7-0. and They haven't played in a week. They had finals this past week. So there was news and a touch of controversy in our conversation with Kelly Grace. He's really trying to downplay it. It's that big of a deal. He's the one who reported that there was a violation. And his team has responded here today as Aaron Boley with a big cheering section behind the Oregon bench, knocks down another three-pointer. She's got nine. Today's her 21st birthday, <laughs> wearing number 21, so. You would keep shooting yeah. on your 21st birthday. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's she's got to, the way she's playing so well. It's a nice response by McCutcheon. McCutcheon, 43% three-point shooter. Michigan State playing without Shea Colley, who would be starting in the backcourt. She's got a knee injury, missing her fourth game. This Spartan team not near 100% as we're now a couple of weeks away from the start of conference play. They'll open up against Iowa here December 30th, so certainly Susie Merchant with an eye on that, knowing that the conference schedule is very important. But disappointment in her voice today that she doesn't have that full roster to take on this top three team, the Oregon Ducks. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, you don't have your best player in Shea Colley. And then Sydney Cooks, you know, we don't know if we'll see her or what percentage uh, health that she is, but those are two of your best players, two of your players that can score at a high level. But this Michigan State team, provided they get everyone healthy, they are going to be an absolute force in the Big Ten this year. Freshman Tori Osmond is into the game. That won't go. Also into the game, Mia Holly working on the offensive glass, now working on the floor, and that hard work paid off as the Spartans get a couple from Cook. away turnover by Oregon but cut it on the run with Holly on her left <laughs> Oregon jumped out to a 9-0 lead less than two minutes into the game but Michigan State has settled things down they've turned Oregon over and they brought it back to a four-point game well they're also giving themselves those extra opportunities that we talked about early offensive rebounds turning into points for the Spartans Tough shot by Adi Gilden. Cutcher will slow things down. Turnover by Michigan State, averaging 14 a game and an easy hoop the other way for Chavez. You know, Oregon sits in this zone, and I think sometimes what a lot of perimeter players don't really recognize until they're upon them is that they have great length on their perimeter as well. This is a long Oregon team. Maite Cazorla with the steal. They are utilizing that wingspan. These are big guards. You have to be sure of your pass before you throw it. Skip pass into the corner, and the look from the freshman is in and out, and Oregon running off the miss with Chavez. Ionescu. Sabrina, three of four from the field. Got caught in between there, and a foul is called on Bowley for Oregon. Michigan State in the bonus, so they'll shoot a couple of free throws with 140 to go in the first quarter. Nice job at Michigan State in the middle part of this first quarter just to battle their way back. Speaking of battling, that's what's going on for Madrika Cook. She's been fighting a knee injury. Susie Merchant said she's not at 100%. You just talked about Shea Colley. Cindy Cook's missing the last year with that ankle injury. Allen makes the first, bring it back to a five-point game. Jenna, the six foot four senior from Bedford, Indiana, only senior on his Michigan State team. So Sydney Cooks is into the game, six four sophomore out of Wisconsin. We'll see how much she's able to do today playing with that injured right ankle. Esco stripped by McCutcheon. Esku kept fighting, found her teammate Kazorla, and it will be Michigan State ball. That's a solid defensive stand 
by Michigan State. You know, when you're playing against a great offensive team, you have to try and find ways that you can be physical, that you can disrupt their rhythm against them. And I thought Michigan State did that on that possession. <laughs> so Sydney Cooks wasn't interested in waiting around to no. show you what she could do today, apparently. Oh, she can shoot that thing, okay? And, and that ankle, listen, all I know is when I've had ankle, or when I've had different injuries over the years, Eric, you can still shoot. Okay, you can still stand the there and the shoot it. The pain goes away, too, yeah. once you see one go down. You're, she has this range. This has been a part of her game since she's been in high school. The ability to step out and knock down the three-point shot off the bench, firing. Love it. Averaging seven points and five boards a game. Here, yeah, Cloudin picks up the foul. We've seen UNESCO get knocked around a little bit as Michigan State tries to get physical with the top player on the Ducks. Yeah, I mean, we see we saw that a lot over the last couple of seasons. Uh, that's the scouting report uh, for a lot of teams against Oregon and against Sabrina because you're, you're trying to find a way to provide some resistance from them offensively. I and mean, she understands that. She's obviously uh, got incredible toughness and is able to play through some of the physicality that she sees on a nightly basis. Eight first quarter points, final minute of the opening quarter. Cloudin. Cooks getting in there on the offensive glass. That won't go down, but Michigan State's battling on the glass, trying to get some second chances here, and it's brought them back to a three-point game. Ebert lost it. Oregon's usually very good taking care of the basketball, averaging 10 turnovers a game. They're a plus six in that category, and they're number one in the country when it comes to assist to turnover ratio ahead of UConn. Shot clock is off. Michigan State will hold for a final shot. We did not think in the first two minutes of the game that with a three, it could be tied at the end of one quarter, but that's what could happen here. Michigan State gets a three. We'll be even at 25. Five seconds. Not much happening here. Taken away by McCutcheon. When you ask Kelly Graves, well, she's not truly your point guard. She's a playmaking guard. She does so many things well. Yeah, she's she's the two because Cazorla is a talented point guard. And that's where Kelly Graves gets a little, I can say sensitive. He doesn't strike me as a sensitive type. But, and you've talked about it before, Kara. It's not just a one-player team. I mean, this is a team that has one through five you see on the court who can fight. That fight is led by this player, though. The level of intensity is set by this player, UNESCO, the basket and the foul. Well, they, they just have two guards. That's the way I look at it. My take is Orla and, and Sabrina UNESCO. You, you look at Sabrina coming in from the weak side, getting the offensive rebound. Seen Oregon get a couple baskets off of offensive rebounds already. And she's she's an absolute lion of a competitor. Like, I, I think the thing that struck me getting a chance to, to work with Sab this summer is every day she's like this. And, and so it's not just when it's a national TV game or it's not just when it's a game itself. Every single play, every single drill, she wants to win it, she wants to dominate it. You just don't see players, a ton of players like that. Kara had first-hand experience seeing that everyday dedication by Sabrina. We'll talk about that in a moment. But Cutchin, a good move to the basket, just wouldn't go down. And it will remain Michigan State basketball. I, I need to call you Coach Carol Lawson, <laughs> right? You're not in this photo here, but you coached yep. this Oregon group in the three-on-three -three into the Worlds in the Philippines. Yep, into the World Championship. Uh, we, we played in Manila, so there are four players that comprised the, the roster, all from Oregon. And you saw them. We had Aaron Boley, who's already hit a, a couple of threes uh, this afternoon. Ruthie Hebert, who is a terrific post player, first team. Uh, all Pac-12 player, and uh, then Audie Gildon, uh, as well as Sabrina. And uh, it was a lot of fun to work with those players, and, and you kind of get to get to know them, obviously being around them every day for, for a couple weeks and know their competitiveness and understand their drive. And, um, so I, I feel really confident, not just because I have the personal relationship with them, but because of what I saw behind the scenes and how good this Oregon team can be this year. You saw that competitiveness on display against pros. Well, this was a group of college yes. kids playing against pros in the Philippines. Yeah, playing against pros. So the, the Oregon group, the Oregon Quartet, they 
won the national tournament at Colorado Springs and then qualified for the world championships, which was, which was against professional players. We lost to Italy in the quarterfinals. Italy ended up winning the world championship. And, uh, it was a, a tremendous experience for them to play those those high-level players on the international stage. And if you wondered what they <laughs> thought of their coach, yeah. this is what we saw pregame. Okay, so you they, snuck, they, they still like you, yeah. which is good. Yeah, okay, of course. Yes. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I, I love my time with them. So mature. Um, and when you're around players every day, of course, a big part of the relationship is it's more than basketball. Sure. You, you talk about academics, you talk about, um, you know, different life things and different skills and different hopes and dreams that they have. And so you really get to know them on that level. And, um, they're, they're all great, great young women. And as you know full well, the players make the coach. Oh, you absolutely. had some pretty good players, yeah. including Sabrina Ionescu. Yeah, just give the ball to Sack. That was, <laughs> That's a that was the best yeah. play. You yeah, had one yeah, play, yeah, right? Yeah. Just one. That's <laughs> <laughs> Look away. The feed to Heberg and an assist for Ionescu. Averaging eight and a half assists a game, third in Division One. Answered the other way for Michigan State. Hey, I've been impressed with how Michigan State has answered. That's a perfect word, Eric. The way they, they came out, get a 9-0 run to start the game. Oregon looks like they're just in cruise control. Michigan State battles back. Again, they're staying attached. That's what you need to do against this Oregon team offensively. Sabali knocks it down. The sophomore averaging 15 points a game. Again, there are five players averaging 12 points or more for Oregon. Everybody has a hand in the success for the Ducks averaging better than 94 points a game. Side and the finish by Cook. Six points for Cook, getting the start here today. Played just eight games a year ago and entered the starting lineup before her season came to an end thanks to an ACL injury. Hebert on the offensive glass, and Yonescu traveled. She knows it. Wonderful drive there by Ionescu to draw the help and bounce pass to, to Ruthie Hebert and then yeah, a little post to post pass. I like it. Nice drive. That's something Michigan State's had great success on, isn't it? They've been able to drive into the lane, draw help. We've got eight assists on 11 made field goals here today. And drawing that extra defender, that extra Oregon weak side defender, and being able to finish over their, their, their length on the back line. That's something I, I wasn't sure. Uh, about Michigan State coming in, would they be able to consistently score over that length? And they've been able to do it. Traveling violation on Michigan State. That is the seventh MSU turnover. Michigan State winning at Oakland on Wednesday, put 102 points on the board to top the Golden Grizzlies in Rochester, Michigan. Susan Merchant was an assistant there. Had six players in double figures for the first time this year. Two high-scoring teams head-to-head -head here in East Lansing. McCutcheon drops down. All five foot five of her getting the defensive rebound. And Allen trailing and knocking down the triple. Well, she can really shoot it. I mean, watched her after shoot around just get shots up. Three three-pointer after three-pointer. And just a dangerous weapon for Susie Merchant beyond the arc, especially in that trail, in that trail run. Put back for Lydia Giomi into the game. First points, she's averaging to a game, the sophomore out of Seattle. Allen, tough pass for Coco Gaines to handle. It will be Oregon basketball. Saturday noon Eastern on ESPN. It's a Sonic blockbuster and a Final Four rematch from last season. Number 21, Villanova taking on number two, Kansas at the Allen Fieldhouse. You can always watch it live on the ESPN app from anywhere. Villanova with the 16-point win in the Final Four last season and route to a national championship. Eighth meeting all time between Villanova and Kansas. Looking forward to that one next weekend. Here it's a five-point game. Oregon jumped out to a 9-0 lead. Michigan State called an early timeout. 
Spartans battle back, but now Ionescu finding the range. 14 points for the junior. She has 14, Boley has nine, eight points for Saboli. And a foul called on Oregon. Eight point lead, 4.57 to go in the second quarter. We'll take the timeout as Oregon trying to stay perfect on the season. Ionescu, deep three to stretch out the advantage for the Ducks. It's the largest lead for Oregon so far in this game. As you mentioned, it was 16 to four. Right now, an eight-point game. Jenna Allen has led the charge for Michigan State. She's the first Spartan into double figures with 11. Seven and one Michigan State. Seven and zero oh, Oregon. McCutcheon for three. What a shot! Yeah, just an incredible play by McCutcheon. Six points for McCutcheon. Forty-three percent from outside the three-point line this season. Averaging twelve points a game, and it will be Michigan State basketball. It's another Oregon turnover. You touched on it, Eric. How that's something they do well traditionally. Uh, just coming off the ball screen action. Nice step back to get Boley the back pedal, create enough space. With that 5-5 five, five height, you've got to, to do something, right, to create enough space to get your jumper off. And McCutcheon is just a tough competitor. And we talked about it at the top. They're going to lean on her a lot today. She's the primary defender on Ionescu. She's also somebody that has to play, make, and score for them. Holly on the drive and the finish. Yeah, Holly coming off a season high 10 last time out against Oakland. Four here in the first half. Mentioned the turnovers. Six, now seven for Oregon in the first half. Michigan State averaging 86 points a game. That's good for 10th in the country, first among Big Ten teams. Pretty efficient across the board. Good from outside the three-point line. They make eight a game. They made 10 against Oakland last time out. Inescu with the rebound. I think Allen's got to look at the basket on that play for herself first. And that pick and pop action, I thought she might have had enough of an alley to take a three-point shot. We've already talked about and seen in action her ability to knock down that three-point shot. That's her fourth rebound to go along with 11 points. Taryn McCutcheon, the junior from East Lansing. Had 19 points a season high last time out against Oakland. All in the first 15 minutes, she knocked down five threes. Holly got position inside for two. That's uh, a nice play call by Susie Merchant. Everyone lifted and then cut the player across the floor, get on the block, and get in an ISO situation. They get the easy layup out of it. Like it may have been a walk on Heber. They play on with McCutcheon. Michigan State looking for their first lead, and they'll have a chance at a four-point play. <laughs> Holly on the inside, Allen on the outside, and the foul in a timeout called by Oregon. What a response by Michigan State. Down by 12 in the opening minutes. They've come back to take their first lead here in East Lansing. Uh, Jenna Allen's been terrific in this first half. Initially, it was her attack on the interior, utilizing that strength and the skill around the basket to be able to finish. 
it's an area of the court that she can really challenge this Oregon, Oregon defense. Now you add in that three-point shot that she has, and Susie Merchant's talked about really changing her offense because she has bigs that can knock down that three-point shot with regularity. They're lifted a lot, and that helps stretch the floor and give better spacing for her guards, and they will actually post their guards a lot. So it's kind of a flip of your traditional, right, where you're posting your posts and you're allowing the three-point shot for your guards. In Michigan State, you'll see Cooks and Allen knocking down three-point shots with regularity. Michigan State outscoring Oregon 17-12 here in the second quarter. Allen finds the opening and makes two more. What a first half for the senior. 16 points on six of eight shooting. That three-pointer is missed. Gilden on the offensive put back for two. First points for the senior. You know, a couple of foul questions here for Oregon as well. This is a team that does not get called for a lot of fouls. Boley has two fouls. Zaboli has a couple of fouls. Ginescu just picked up her first personal foul before that timeout called by Kelly Graves. McCutcheon, deep three. Chavez back to Ionescu. 90 seconds to go in the first half. Allen to Egan on both ends of the floor. McCutcheon drops it back. Cooks for three. Second three-pointer of the half. And how about Michigan State falling behind by 12 now. They've come back to lead by five. Bird can't get it, cooks the rebound. Back out top, McCutcheon weaving through traffic, comes up short, and here's Ionescu. Good read by Holly to come in and knock it away. Two on one back the other way. McCutcheon to Cooks. What a performance from Michigan State. Uh, it's incredible. Solid defensively. Turning over a team that doesn't get turned over very much in Oregon. And then combining three-point shooting with terrific scoring in the paint to have this lead. McCutcheon, the clean strip. It's so loud in here, you can't even hear the horn. A 17-2 run for Michigan State, led by Jenna Allen. 16 points, four rebounds, six of eight shooting, but McCutcheon setting the intensity level. Six points with a couple of threes, but how about the defense by Michigan State as well? What a turnaround. Uh, incredible play by their post players. Cooks and Allen, you've got Cooks knocking down the three-point shot. The last basket of the half for Michigan State. Oh, smarty. You are watching the Big Ten on ESPN, a Sunday afternoon in East Lance. Performance for them, particularly in the second quarter. First half summary, Oregon turned the ball over 11 times in the first half, seven times in the second quarter. Their season average is 10 and a half turnovers a game, so they've already hit that number. They have not been called for a lot of fouls this year. They're averaging 11 called a game. They had eight fouls called in the first half. So a little out of character here for Oregon in the first 20 minutes for head coach Kelly Graves. Yeah, I'm sure he addressed it at halftime that, that they just need to calm down on the offensive end of the floor, not get sped up. There's a nice start for, for Oregon out of the end out of bounds play to get Bowley a clean look at the basket. Bowley and Sabali with a couple of fouls in that first half, so it limited their minutes. It's going to be the third personal foul on uh, two. It's like 
Kelly Graves is going to let her play with three right now in the opening minute of the third quarter. Well, this is not a deep Oregon team. Nope. Yeah. Kelly Graves talked about, I, I like the players I have. There's just not a lot of them, <laughs> right? I mean, we, we've talked about their production from their starting lineup, but it's a very thin bench. So you, you have to, at times, through the course of a season with a thin bench, allow players to play with two fouls in the first half, three fouls in, in the third quarter. It's just, it's just what you have to do. And that's certainly not unique to Oregon. You were just at Notre Dame UConn. It, it's five on five pretty much, although yeah. there, you get a key contribution from a bench player that can make a difference in a game. As UNESCO, who has hit the deck a couple of times today, Michigan State's gotten physical with her, as you pointed out before. That's something that's not new to Sabrina. She'll hit to the free throw line and shoot a couple. So as she steps to the free throw line, we remind you that Saturday at noon, Eastern ESPN, Sonic Blockbuster, Final Four rematch in men's hoop, 21st ranked Villanova, number two ranked Kansas in Lawrence. You can watch it live on the ESPN app from anywhere. about the three, couldn't get the two, and a rebound for Bowley. Bowley launches a three and hits it just in front of her cheering section. Her family is here. She's from Hodgenville, Kentucky. It's about a six-hour drive, depending on who's driving, <laughs> up here in East Lansing. Uh, Aaron Bowley, a decorated high school player. There's her dad, Scott Bowley. Both her parents are here. She has a, that strong contingent here cheering her on. Being out in Oregon, there's not many games close to home that she gets from Kentucky. But spent her freshman year at Notre Dame, opted to transfer after her freshman campaign, sat out last season, and now is giving a chance to, to play. And I think she's going to play a vital role for this Oregon team because of what we've seen her do a ton already, which is knock down the three-point shot, stretch the floor. She also, with her size, gives them the ability to switch certain screens. 14 points in 14 minutes today for Bowling. Good, strong take to the basket by Madrika Cook. Cook's in the double figures with 10. Her season high is 12. Bowling will try again and hit again. <laughs> Celebrating her 21st birthday by getting hot from outside the three-point arc. I mean, she can do this. This is something that's in Aaron. She's always been a great shooter, and she's had the ability to get hot. Hasn't shot it particularly well. She's 35% from three on the season, but she's certainly someone that's capable of having afternoons like this. Victoria Gaines on the offensive glass gets the put back. When I say she hasn't shot it well, 35% is a solid three-point percentage, but she's capable of shooting 40%. That's how good a shooter Aaron Bowley is. Another turnover for Oregon. Taken away, and they score the other way with Tori Osmond, the freshman. First points for Osmond. Six-point lead for Michigan State. Nesku. Offensive foul as she kicked it into the corner. Second personal on Unescu. Oregon led by 12 in the first quarter. Michigan State closed the first half on a 17-2 run. They're up by six with the basketball here in East Lansing. Heads to the bench. Ten points on four of seven shooting. And about 11 to shoot for the Spartans. That's a great act of help by Satu. And you look at the play calling, I, I think the way that Michigan State has attacked Oregon defensively has been perfect. Because they're they're doing things like this, getting offensive rebounds. They're attacking them straight down the gut and utilizing 
their superior physicality on the offensive end to be able to get themselves some shots. And it helps that they're making some threes as well. Seven offensive rebounds, and right now, Aaron Boley leading the way for Oregon. 19 points to lead all scores. Allen tracks it down. McCutcheon tried to throw it off of an Oregon player. Zorla jumped out of the way. Janescu finishes. McCutcheon looks for the two, gets the two. Uh, just how she set that up. Uh, McCutcheon knew that she was going for the handoff, sets Kazorla up, faking like she's going to cut toward the basket. Does a great job of setting herself up to get enough clean lines to be able to get her shots up. Eight points to go with her seven assists. Allen on the glass. Touch it, feeds it to Holly. Made the extra pass and spinning it in for two more is Coco Gaines. Six points now for Gaines. Eight point Michigan State lead. And a strip by Holly. Good defensive play. It will remain Oregon ball. Michigan State certainly has answered the challenge. They were flat at the start. Their coach called an early timeout. That turned things around. They're getting contributions from everyone who checks in right now for Susie Merchant, whether it's on the offensive end or defensive end. And another turnover for Oregon. That is their 14th. Well, that's the story of the game for Oregon uh, on the offensive end of the floor. And you look at their turnovers. It's uncharacteristic of this Oregon team to turn it over at this rate. You can see uh, on the season, first in Division I, they average just under 11 turnovers a game on the season. We're at 14 already, and we've got half of the third quarter and the fourth quarter still to go. Michigan State turns it over. There's Ionescu inside of five to go, third quarter. It's been a tough matchup for McCutcheon, but she has stood her ground against Ionescu. One and done for the Ducks. Allen. 16 first half points. She has not scored in the second half as of yet for Michigan State. Into the hands of McCutcheon with five to shoot. McCutcheon. Floater is short. Rebound for Oregon. Holy. Sobley accelerates to the basket. Beautiful take to the hoop. For the freshman, she's in the double figures. Both teams look a little bit tired, a little bit winded. We're inside the five minute media timeout. We've gone uninterrupted here for a couple of minutes. So McCutcheon slowing it down. Cooks made a couple of threes in the first half. Can't hit that time. Three and a half to play in the quarter. Sabali. Batted back into the hands of Satu. That's Bowley keeping it alive underneath. And it works out for Oregon as Ionescu hits. What a great play by Oregon. And what a tough blow to a Michigan State team that had played pretty solid defense. Two up two shots, and they allow Oregon to get a third, and Ionescu makes him pay. 20 points, four rebounds, three assists for Ionescu. Allen. There's the double. Allen fights through it to get her first points in the second half. Big edge in the paint for Michigan State. They've outscored Oregon 38-22 in the paint. Two and a half to go in the third. Bowley keeps it going. Coming off a career high 24 last time out against Long Beach State. She has 22, six of eight from outside the three-point line.
Offensive foul. Minescu takes the charge, and that will get us to a timeout. Well, the three-point attack has allowed Oregon to make this a one-possession game. Sabrina Ionescu and Aaron Boley, stay hot, EB, stay hot. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Domino's. Order online and track your order. one here in East Lansing between Michigan State and Oregon. Two-point game, Michigan State attacking the basket. That's been a big part of their game plan is to be able to get their guards downhill, isolate their posts from the elbow area, just make plays by driving the ball. Offensive rebounds, they sprinkled those in as well, but plus 14 for Michigan State in terms of points in the paint. So that's been an area that they've been able to really get a ton of production. Oregon's countered that, as you see Aaron Boley sitting there with their three-point attack. I mean, Oregon's been able to go eight for 17 from three, six of those from Aaron Boley. That's enabled them to stay in this one as well. We've got a great ball game, man. What we possession. do, we do. Michigan State receiving votes in the AP Bowl. Oregon number three in the AP Bowl. Perfect 7-0. This has been a scrappy performance by this Michigan State team. Again, without Shake Holly, very big part. If they're going to compete for a Big Ten title, you think they will be in the mix? I do. I mean, I, I think Maryland's the best team in the Big Ten. But you certainly look at teams like Michigan State, a team like Minnesota. I think there's it's not a it's not a lot uh, who's going to win this Big Ten tournament or Big Ten championship. And Michigan State's impressed me today without their best player. I mean, Shea Colley is an incredible player. And they've been, to this point, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the third-ranked team in the country. Shea averaging 13 points, six rebounds, four assists a game. Very good defender as well. This is her fourth consecutive game with an MCL sprain. So Oregon turns it over out of the timeout. That is their 15th turnover. Their season high is 19. Allen. More points in the paint for Michigan State. Allen with 20 on 8 of 11 shooting. Michigan State as a team is shooting nearly 60% from the field. Open three, not this time, and a rebound for the Spartans. Cloudin in trouble, and she was bumped on her way down the lane. Foul called on Oregon. Four-point game here in East Lansing. Centrally Link Field will be rocking for our Week 14 Monday Night Football matchup between NFC playoff contenders Kirk Cousins and the Vikings in Seattle to take on Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. 8:15 Eastern, 5:15 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. So you can watch anywhere. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at six. Kirk Cousins, a Michigan State product, going against the Wisconsin alum Russell Wilson. Substitutions for Oregon. Gildon back into the game. Tom Izzo is here in the building, rooting on Michigan State women. They had a win at Florida yesterday. Five point lead for Michigan State. They led by seven at halftime. Holy doesn't get the roll and the rebound for the Spartans. And a blocking foul called on Ionescu. That's foul number three on the All-American. Well, a transition game for Michigan State. I love how they've pushed the pace and they've looked to attack. I mean, their guards and their wings have looked to get into the paint. Very aggressive in transition. They've been rewarded either with layups or getting themselves to the free throw line. So, 7 of 18 from the free throw line in the early going this season. Makes a couple, now with 12 matching your season high. Back 
Back to a seven-point lead for the Spartans. Their largest lead, eights for Susie Merchant in her 12th season. 251 wins here in East Lansing. Bowling was challenged on the jumper. Michigan State comes away. Wow, they're determined to get a shot up, and it goes down. She is a freshman, a fearless freshman. Shot clock and game clock just about in sync. Oregon will hold for a final shot facing their largest deficit of the game. Trying to get Bowley free. Bowling draws a crowd. The putback comes too late. Shot clock expired. There's a tenth of a second on the game clock. So there was just a little bit of a difference. That's why the shot and the game clocks were both on. So one tenth of a second left on the game clock. Goes in the books as a shot clock violation and another turnover for yep. Oregon. They will confer and perhaps check the monitor here just to make sure on the time. Well, this is Michigan State. Susie Merchant has to feel really good about how her team has played. Uh, outside of that first few minutes of the game, I, I thought they, they were a little tentative to start the game, but outside of that first few minutes, so the clock will stop right there. So it should be .9, I would think. Yeah, point eight, point right, nine, right yeah. there. You're right. So they are at the monitor right now, taking a look at that last sequence. Uh, but, but to get back to Michigan State, you, you look at how they're playing uh, with great aggression, with great confidence, and one of the hardest things to do is to close out a win like this. Right? That's that's one of the hardest things to do. It's it's I want to say easy, but it's easier to play well and play, play free. But now when it's in your grasp and you're an unranked team and you have this great opportunity at home against a third-ranked team in the country, can you close the deal in the fourth quarter? And so I, we get to sit back and watch and, oh. and see if they're able well, to do it. Got to talk a little bit too. Uh, oh to yeah, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, a little bit, not too just much. Just a little bit. Yeah, a lot not of too crowd much. here at Breslin. Well, the best win of the year for Michigan State was against Virginia on November 28th. They held the Cavs to four points in the opening quarter and route to a 25-point win. But today, taking on an undefeated team that's ranked third in the country. Now the officials are going to give the ball to Oregon. Maybe they're deeming it hit the rim. It hit the rim and then uh, getting the ball back, this is how much left. It's not going to be enough time to get it on the line, so. Well, that will be the final, so no turnover there for Oregon. But they are trailing here by nine, entering the fourth quarter. Michigan State taking on the third-ranked Ducks on top, heading to the fourth. UFC fans, this is the moment you truly all been waiting for. The third ranked Oregon Ducks trailing heading to the fourth quarter here in East Lansing to Michigan State 69 60 as we head to the fourth. There are three Carol Lawson back here courtside. I'm surprised. Are you surprised to see this score here heading into the fourth? I'm definitely surprised. Uh, not because I didn't know that Michigan State was a good team. They're a good team. But you look at the explosiveness of this Oregon attack. And so to look up and see only 60 points through three quarters, to look up and see the negative assist to turnover ratio when they lead the country at over two to one, that has been surprising to me. I've always thought that to beat Oregon, one of the things you have to do is be able to score at a really high rate. And what Michigan State is showing us this afternoon is you can guard them, you can play physical de defensively, disrupt their rhythm, and you're going to give yourselves an opportunity to win, and that's exactly what the Spartans have done. 14 assists, 15 turnovers for the Ducks as we head into the fourth quarter. And Gildan gets whistled for the foul. Sabrina Ionescu, 20 points. Four rebounds, three assists. She does have three fouls. No one with more than three for either side. Jenna Allen was the spark for Michigan State in the first half. 16 first half points. Michigan State was down 
by 12 in the first quarter. They battled back. They outscored Oregon 24-14 in that second quarter, going on a 17-2 run to close out the half. And now a turnover for the Spartans. You talked at the top of our telecast, Kara, about the toughness and the competitive nature of Sabrina Ionescu. Aaron Boley has been outstanding in the second half, not this time, but with the game on the line, it's got to be in Ionescu's hands. Well, there's no question that Oregon needs her to take over a little bit here in this fourth quarter to cut into this deficit. They rely upon her to do that, and there's also no question in my mind that she knows that and she understands that, and she's going to try and do it. And Michigan State knows that, too, as they'll swarm her. Good defensive play by Ruthie Hebert. Possession arrow will give the ball to the Ducks. Sabali back into the game as Gildan will check out. Bowley leading the way for Oregon with 22 points on 8 of 15 shooting. 20 points for Allen to pace Michigan State. on the shot clock. UNESCO trying to create. Misses everything. Seems like the ball's just getting stuck a little bit here for Oregon. Good move again. The freshman with the take to the hoop. So what do you notice if we contrast, compare and contrast those last two possessions? A lot of passing the ball around the perimeter. No drives, no aggressive moves or passes towards the basket for Oregon. And then Michigan State gets in, just takes it right down their throat in transition. Ionescu fighting for the offensive rebound, couldn't get it. Sabali with the rebound. Ebert backs in Allen for two. Timeout called by Oregon. Been a quiet game for Ruthie Hebert. Four points, nine rebounds. Timeout called in a nine-point game. How about this take to the basket? The fake, the finish, Michigan State up. Hey. Final Four rematch in men's hoop coming up Saturday at noon Eastern on ESPN, a sonic blockbuster. Villanova and Kansas, number 21 and number two in Lawrence. You can always watch it live on the ESPN app from anywhere. Michigan State was just up by double digits for the first time today. The lead is currently nine with 7.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Spartans have won four in a row, coming off a win against Oakland last time out. Their lone loss this year was a four-point setback to 13th-ranked NC State. After a poor start to this one where they fell behind by a score of 16-4. Spartans have turned it around, played hard, attacked the basket, turned Oregon over. It's been a good formula so far. Can they sustain it over this final 7.45 as Oregon brings pressure into the backcourt? Calmly broken by Michigan State. Madrika Cook has it stripped away. Ebert. Bowley with the rebound. Ionescu, a rare open look for three. She's not going to miss that one. And you said it right, a rare open look. I think Michigan State's done a solid job guarding Sabrina Ionescu today. Why it's this big crowd here at the Breslin. Allen. Save, no reset of the shot clock. Allen doesn't waste any time, though. 22 for Jenna Allen. It's a new season high. She went for 21 against Virginia. Career high is 28. Ionescu, another three, and another make for the All-American. Ionescu. 
26 now for UNESCO to go with four rebounds and three assists. Yeah, smart by Michigan State to bring it out right there and set it up. Didn't have the look that they wanted. Clouded will get fouled. Back-to-back -back threes for Sabrina Ionescu. Yeah, great passing by Oregon. What has been the difference? You've got the ball getting to the paint in a couple possessions. And because it got to the paint, one by a post-up of Ruthie Hebert, one by a drive of Maite Cazorla, good things happen. And I think when Oregon's offense has stagnated this afternoon, it's been because they've been content with just passing around the perimeter. And somebody on their team has to be able to drive hard and get two feet in the paint. And when they do that, I, I think it just gives them a better chance to have a successful offensive possession. And the turnovers have hurt as well. I mean, we, we've talked about that. I mean, certainly turning the basketball over at the rate that they have, uh, very unlike uh, Oregon on the offensive end. Nia Collado with nine points. Top of the team lead in minutes this year. She has stepped right in and been a big part of things for Michigan State. Short-handed team with Shea Colley out with an injury. Oregon scores again to make it a five-point game. Eber now with six. Oregon's taking McCutcheon out of the offense a little bit. Big block. Zabali. Loudon attacks the basket again. Out to Ionescu. Three-pointer is short from Foley. Here's McCutcheon. Approaching five minutes to go. Fourth quarter, five-point Michigan State lead. Oregon leading the nation in scoring, an assisted turnover ratio, second in field goal percentage, fourth in three-pointers made per game. Michigan State, after that slow start, has controlled things, but an opening here for Oregon. Bowley can't get it to go, and Michigan State will walk it up and work some clock. As they should. I mean, take your time. Force Oregon to play hard for 30 seconds on the defensive end. The other thing you're doing is you're shrinking the game, you're shrinking the number of possessions that an, a, a solid and an explosive offensive team can have. Shot clock at eight. And lost out of bounds by Holly. That will get us to a timeout under the five minute mark. It comes with 4.17 to go in the fourth quarter. Michigan State holding on by five. Sabrina Ionescu, the All-American for the Oregon Ducks. Started off struggling a little bit for Oregon. I think at times, Michigan State has done a great job of bringing multiple defenders in her direction. Three, four, white shirts around, but what great players do is they find a way. Game high, 26 points for Sabrina. And she's got a nice little balance and been very efficient here in the second half. You see the four for five but you can bet that the last four minutes and 70, 17 seconds is going to be a st steady diet of Sabrina on the offensive end for the Ducks making plays. This is a team that's been down late this season against Syracuse on November 10th. They were down six with just over two minutes to go. They had three straight threes. Ionescu hit two of those threes. Aaron Boley hit a three. They ended up winning 75-73. So they have been in a position like this a month ago. Down by five here, plenty of time to go in the fourth quarter. Oregon has the ball down by five. Oregon has done a better job of taking care of the basketball over the last several minutes. They get an open look for three. Kazorla! First points of the game.
touch it. Seven on the shot clock. In McCutcheon's hands, and she had an open lane to the basket and couldn't get it to go. And a foul called on Allen. Second personal first team foul on Michigan State this quarter. Where would Oregon be without the three-point shot this afternoon? 11 made threes. Excellent poise by Ionescu to wait till Cazorla comes open. Ball faking her help out of the way. And then Cazorla, what a time to have her first field goal. Rolling to the basket is Boley, the assist to Ionescu. And it is a tie game, approaching three minutes to play in the fourth. Feed inside, Allen gets it to go, the assist to Cooks. 24 for Jenna Allen. Bieber too easy. Eight points for Ruthie Heber, tied up again. Cutcher calls for it again, the shot clock. Inside of 10, Cooks hit a couple in the first half. That's a two for Sydney Cooks. First points of the second half for the sophomore. Two minutes to go in the fourth, another three. This one won't go. Battle for the loose ball and the head's out of bounds, but Cutchin with the box out to keep Ionescu away from it. And it is Michigan State ball. Yeah, look at those two battling for it. Been a battle all game. Yeah, it has. Savali goes into the court. Big shot after big shot. I mean, Michigan State, you talked about the start of the fourth quarter, Eric. Closing a game is one of the hardest things to do when you're the underdog, and that's what they have. A game at home under two minutes, and they have a one possession lead. They've got a big time opportunity here to pull the upset. Inescu can't believe it, but she gets whistled for her fourth personal foul. So again, what has Michigan State done consistently? Attack right down the gut, whether it's been the high ball screen, whether it's been from that elbow area, attacking Oregon's individual one-on-one -on -one defenders. McCutcheon had been quiet for a while. She picks the perfect time to get this crowd going again. A three-pointer, and Michigan State is answered back to go on top by five. Hebert. Open three is missed. Allen gets called for the foul. She shoved Hebert away, so a foul called on Michigan State. Allen staring down the official, and the crowd just now realizing that it is a foul on Michigan State. <laughs> McCutcheon. I mean, we know she can shoot it. I mean, she can absolutely shoot it. You see the emotion of the Spartan bench, uh, they have played a heck of a game so far today. A game worthy of a win. We'll see if they're able to close the deal. 1-10 to go in the fourth. Ebird in trouble in the lane. Made something out of nothing. Double figures now for Ruthie Ebert. Timeout called by Michigan State. Inside of a minute to play. Three-point lead for the Spartans. Ruthie Heber, Oregon's go-to player in the post, does a great job of keeping her pivot foot, the patience. And I think the Michigan State bench would have loved to have a three-second call on that one, but the great patience and the poise by Heber to get herself and her team within one possession. Ten points, 11 rebounds now for Ruthie Heber. Three-point game. Sports Center tonight after Capital One Bowl Mania on ESPN with Bucci and Anderson. They'll have Rams, Bears post-game reaction and analysis, plus a breakdown of Eagles, Cowboys, and a conversation with Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson. Sports Center, 11 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app.
Tom Izzo hanging around for the end of this one. It's been great here in East Lansing. December matchup, unranked Michigan State, third-ranked Oregon. Shot clock down to seven. Allen for three! Incredible play. It's something that Susie Merchant talked to us about at shoot around. She said, I think the pick and pop option could be good for us because Jenna Allen has the ability to do that. Knock down three point shot. So two players go to the ball, go to the guard with the basketball off the ball screen, and Jenna Allen pops back and knocks down the three. Game high 27, 11 for 14 from the field. Incredible, incredible offensive performance. The CSR Spartans on the doorstep of a big time upset. You have to go back 13 years for the last time Michigan State knocked off a team ranked in the top three. Tennessee went down in 2005. Still a lot to be decided here though when UNESCO is on the floor. She takes it right to the basket. Can't get it and who else? Allen rips down the rebound. Oregon's got a foul. And there it is. Finally, Hebert gives the foul. 18.2 to go. Wasted some precious seconds there, taking taking so long to foul. Oregon did. They still had one foul to give. Sabali got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. It will remain Michigan State basketball. And the officials will go to the monitor to make sure 17.1 should be on the game clock. Four team fouls now for Oregon. So the bonus on this next foul for Michigan State, 69% as a team from the free throw line. what the officials are looking at here. You can see from that high angle, 17.1 for the moment on the clock. It'll be Michigan State basketball. One more look and listen. I can't Tough tell me to that. hear the whistle. Yeah, and I can't tell from that angle. So you can see the officials They've got the quad box going right now just to try to check the time and the contact. So while they determine how much time is left, it's going to be Michigan State ball. It's going to be Oregon trying to get a turnover, or at least if that fails, getting a foul, try to keep as much time on the clock as possible here. Again, this is a team that has come up with clutch threes down the stretch this season to come back and beat Syracuse. Now 18.1 on the game clock. There's a good angle now. Oh. So I'm trying to see who it was off of. Trying to see who yeah. last made contact as well. 18 seconds. 18.1 now. A game like this, every tenth of a second counts. It does. <laughs> it does. There's the pressure in the backcourt. Michigan State gets called. For a five count, so a turnover Spartans. 
Michigan State with two timeouts remaining as well. So they had plenty of timeouts to play with here. They couldn't get it in. So the door pushed open a little bit more by the Ducks. Foley has made six three-pointers. She has it. Ionescu launches for three. Michigan State ball. Nice job defensively on that play by Michigan State. Just to stay attached and make Sabrina take a contested three-point shot. See, they switched the inbounder Michigan State has. A touch in. As Oregon tried to throw it off of McCutcheon, I think the officials are saying Kazorla was stepping out of bounds when she made contact with the basketball. Now a timeout called by Michigan State. So it'll be Michigan State basketball with 10.7 to go here in the fourth quarter. Two minutes into the game, it did not look like this was going to be a day to remember for Michigan State. Oregon scored the first nine points of the game before two minutes had elapsed. They stretched it out to a 12-point lead in the first quarter, but Michigan State, scrappy bunch. They played that way after falling behind by 12. I think they executed their game plan perfectly. They had, felt like they had a, a, a big-time advantage uh, with their wings being able to get into the paint. Their defense was physical. They were able to force turnovers on Oregon. Many people don't have the chance to, to force those turnovers on Oregon. And they hit, they hit big shots when they needed. McCutcheon three, Allen three, all big. McCutcheon scrambling for it. She was grabbed by Bowley. And McCutcheon will go to the free throw line to shoot two with 7.5 to go. She's a perfect eight for eight from the line this season. Make no mistake about this. This is a signature win for Michigan State. No question. And it's also a signature win for the Big Ten. You know, all of these things add up through the course of the season when you're talking about potential seeding in an NCAA tournament, potential hosting as the top 16 teams host. So this is this is a huge win. And we'll say it again, they're without their best player, Shea Colley, who is dealing with a sprained knee. So without the services of her, without the 100% services of Sydney Cooks, although she did come in and give them a big boost. So this is a Michigan State team, I think, that's, that's going to have a great season and that's going to be a contender for that Big Ten championship. Finals week for Michigan State. Then they're at Hartford next Sunday, their Big Ten opener against Iowa December 30th. Iowa, another of those strong teams in the Big Ten. But it's been a scrapping, battling, attacking the basket Michigan State team that has been on display here today. Well, the featured player is Jenna Allen, uh, the senior, 27 points, so efficient on 14 field goal attempts, the seven rebounds, and then physically battling Ruthie Hebert and just making things tough for her. Just 10 points on the afternoon for Hebert, and a big part of that, I think, is just the physical presence that Jenna Allen brought to the matchup. Allen with 27 points over third-ranked Oregon. Her career high is 28. She did that at Notre Dame. So big game Jenna Allen comes through. Ionescu, a three-pointer with 4.2 to go. Those two free throws made by McCutcheon. Big right now. Stretch it out to a three-possession game. Sabrina not quitting, though. 29 points. New season high. And she has just fouled out. For Oregon, it's on to South Dakota State on Wednesday. The Jackrabbits, an at-large team in Charlie Cream's bracketology this past week. Then they'll host six-ranked Mississippi State. If you weren't with us at the top of the telecast, Kelly Graves facing a two-game suspension. He told us he has 15 days to decide if he's going to serve the two games or appeal it. We have looked at the schedule. He hadn't said anything that when you look after that Mississippi State game, perhaps back-to-back -back games there, non-conference before Pac-12 play, that those could be the games. But it's to be a tough lesson for his team here today. They suffer their first loss of the season. Michigan State down 12 early, but in the